Good morning all. We'll continue the discussion on the third module, bearing capacity of foundations. We started off with the definition of ultimate bearing capacity and we discussed what net ultimate bearing capacity is, what safe bearing capacity is, etc. And later we've discussed what general shear failure, local shear failure and punching shear failure means and how the foundation would behave on either of these cases. Then we moved to what is called as Tazagi's bearing capacity equation proposed by Tazagi. And initially we had discussed the assumptions which was used to formulate the equation. And we said that it's for a strip footing. And for a strip footing based on Tazagi's equation, the ultimate bearing capacity can be QU is equal to CNC plus gamma DF in Q plus half gamma B in gamma. First term is something related to the cohesive strength. Second term is something related to the surcharge load above the foundation level. Third term is something related to the soil beneath the foundation level. Then we had discussed the extension of Tazagas equation to suit foundations which are not of a strip nature but of rectangular nature. And then we had discussed something for a square footing or for a circular footing. And then we had discussed a case when you have local shear failure, etc. Further, we moved to the effect of water table fluctuation on the ultimate bearing capacity. And then we had discussed a few problems, especially in the previous two videos, I guess. Now, we'll continue the discussion of the numerical problems. And in this particular question, you are given with a strip footing, which is 2 meter in width and at a depth of foundation DF 1.2 meter. Now, it's acted upon by a load of 400 kilopascal. Now, the question is to find the factor of safety. So, the question says that you have a foundation 2 meter width, intensity of load 400 kilometer per meter square, depth is 1.2 meter, and it's sand whose unit weight is 16.8 in bulk nature and 19.5 in saturated nature. C obviously is given as 0 because it's pure sand. Phi is given as 35 degrees. You are asked to determine the factor of safety with respect to shear failure for the following cases. You are asked to use the Tazagas equation as well. The case number 1 or A is when you have the water table 4 meter below the ground level. Case number 2 is 1.2 meter below ground level. Case number 3 is 2.5 meter below the ground level. Case number 4 is 0 0.5 meter below the ground level. And case number 5 is when the water table is at the ground level. So clearly, this problem is something related to the effect of water table on the ultimate bearing capacity of the footing. So you are given with unit weight in bulk nature or bulk unit weight 16.8 and saturated unit weight is given as 19.5. So from saturated unit weight, when you subtract the unit weight of water approximately thickness 10, you will get the submerged unit weight. So gamma dash is 19.5 minus 10, 9.5. Gamma is 16.8 directly given in the question. And angle of internal friction phi is given as 35 degrees. So from which you will get n cube and n gamma from the table proposed by Tasagi or Indian Standard Code. Now, NC doesn't come into picture because C is already given as zero, so you don't have to bother about the value of NC. Now, if the question is not to find the ultimate value capacity, but to find the factor of safety. Now, the factor of safety is nothing but ultimate value capacity divided by the load intensity on the footing, which means 400 kilopascal. So, the denominator is already given for us to find the factor of safety, you will have to find the numerator. We, uh, we will take case A first. Water table is at 4 meter below the ground level. If you can take a look into this picture, you can see that depth of foundation DF is 1.2 and breadth is 2 meter. So water table is at depth of 4 meter means it is greater than df plus b because df is 1.2 and b is 2 meter water table is greater than df plus b which means neither in the second term of the equation nor in the third term of the equation is there 
effective water table, which means you just have to consider gamma in both of these terms. Because we know that the soil beneath the water level, below the water level, has got the effect of submerged unit weight and above the water level you've got the effect of bulk unit weight. So it's just the bulk unit weight that comes into picture for the second and third term. And first term obviously cancels out because c is equal to zero. So you don't have to bother about the first term for any of these cases listed. Second term q and q, and q is already given, q is equal to gamma into d, bulk unit weight into df, 1.2 meter, so you get 20.16. So substituting these values in the equation, first term cancels out 0, 20.16 is q, and q is already given from phi, 41.4. Gamma in the third term is 16.8, the bulk unit weight itself, b, breadth of the foundation is 2 meter, and gamma is 42.4, again based on phi equal to 35 degrees. So solving this equation, you'll get QU is equal to 1547 kilopascal, from which you can estimate the factor of safety as 3.87. Case number B is water table 1.2 meter below the ground level, which means DF is equal to DW or ground water table is at the foundation level. So the soil above the foundation level will have unit weight gamma. Below the foundation level will have the effect of gamma dash. Or in short, second term of the equation will have gamma. Third term of the equation will have gamma dash. So as in the previous case, Q is equal to gamma into D is equal to 20.16, the same value. Ultimate bearing capacity will be equal to CNC0 plus Q and Q plus half gamma dash b n gamma because gamma dash is the third term which influences the effect of soil below the foundation level so substituting the values you get q u is equal to 1237 kilopascal and dividing the value with 400 given in the question you get the factor of safety as 3.09 case number three is when the water table is 2.5 meter below the ground level, which means water table is somewhere in between the depth of the foundation df and df plus b, because df plus b is 3.2 meter and df is 1.2 meter and dw falls in between that 2.5 meter. So this is a case. So that is when third term of the equation proposed by Tasagi will have gamma bar or CMC plus Q and Q plus half gamma bar B and gamma. Second term will have the same surcharge load because the soil above the foundation level is of bulk nature. Third term will have gamma bar where gamma bar is equal to the equation proposed here. Gamma dash is already known 9.5 dw is given in the question 2.5 df we know 1.2 b is breadth of a foundation 2 meter so substituting these values you get gamma bar the value as 14.25 kilonewton per meter cube so everything else is quite similar cnz first term cancels out second term has the same value as that of the previous two cases and third case you substitute gamma bar and QU turns out to be 1439 kilopascal, giving a factor of safety of 3.59. The fourth case is when the water table is at 0 0.5 meter below the ground level. So water table is between the foundation level and the ground level, somewhere here. Which means again, the second term, Q and Q, will have the effect of combination gamma into 0.5 and gamma dash into 0.7 and the third term half gamma bar b n gamma i'm sorry half gamma b n gamma will have the effect of the submerged unit weight because the soil below, below the foundation level is submerged like this 
So q u is equal to c n c plus q n q plus half gamma dash p n gamma, where q is equal to gamma into 0 0.5 plus gamma dash into 0 0.7. Q is nothing but the surcharge load at the foundation level, which is equal to gamma into 0 0.5 gamma dash into the rest 0 0.7. So that gives you a value of 15.05 kilopascal. So the surcharge load is 15.05 kilopascal at the foundation level. So substituting that in the equation, 15.05 into nq plus half gamma dash b n gamma, you get q u as 1025.8 kilopascal. Dividing by 400, which is the load applied on the footing, you get the factor of safety as 2.56. And the last case, case E, is when the water table is at the ground level. That's a case where dw is less than df, like this, is at the ground level. So whatever soil that you have below the ground level is completely saturated and hence we'll have to consider submerged unit weight, gamma dash. There's no gamma bulk coming to picture. So in short, the second term and the third term will have gamma dash. So CNC obviously is equal to zero, gamma dash is 9.5. DF is 1.2, NQ is 41.4, gamma dash again is 9.5, B is 2, and gamma is 42.4. So substituting these values, you will get QU as approximately 874 kilopascal. Now again, I would suggest you to work these problems on your own and just cross check if you are getting the same answer. Again, uh, the approximations you might probably take into consideration could be gamma w. You may have taken that as 9.8. I have taken it as 10 approximately. So chances are high that those fluctuations may get reflected in the final answer. But still, just try to see if the final answer is somewhere in the range of 874. And once you get QU divided by 400, and the factor of safety turns out to be 2.2. Now, if Apart from solving this question, I would suggest you that the takeaway from this solution is that you should get a pulse of how the factor of safety varies with respect to the fluctuation water table. Now this value, factor of safety 2.2, is the least value that we have considered or obtained in the five cases. So you can see that as a water table rises, the factor of safety on the foundation decreases, which means higher the water table, the footing of the foundation has got a lower factor of safety which means it's prone to failure. That I would say is a takeaway from this numerical problem apart from all the solutions that you have worked out using a calculator.